All right, so here we are, folks. I'm going to be looking at the Ambernique RG350M. And uh, this differs from the RG350P, I think it's called, which I think P stands for plastic and the M stands for um, metal or metallic. So this one's got a metallic case. This one comes in a rose gold finish. So this is the first one I've owned and I bought it especially for um, download and upload in retro games and specifically games from the 80s um, computer games and stuff like that but also I'm a fan of um, the PlayStation 1 so I owned a PlayStation 1 and still have a few games of the PlayStation 1 which you can upload onto this system or uh, get the ROMs for um, 80s computer games, I enjoy playing ZX Spectrum games, so I'm from the UK, ZX Spectrum is popular in the UK, I don't think it was that popular in America. Um, my mate had a C64 back in the day, so I uh, played a few of those games, so uploaded some of those games plus the emulators to go with the uh, computer systems uh, for nostalgic purposes, bit of a nostalgia freak. And also the Amstrad CPC computers. I had an Amstrad CPC 6128. So I uploaded an up, download an, uh, uploaded or downloaded an emulator to the system to play CPC, Amstrad CPC games. Uh, the system already comes with like a PS emulator, the PS1, um, Neo Geo Arcade game emulator is SNES, Super Nintendo, NES games, that's the original Nintendo system, Game Boy, Super Game Boy Advance, or Game Boy Advance, is it Game Boy Advance? Just Game Boy Advance. I never had a Game Boy Advance. The systems I had in my life were the 80s computers, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, 6128, then went on to a PS1, and then I had the original Xbox, and it's only until recently, after a midlife crisis, that I got into gaming again, where I uh, got myself a PS4 and a Nintendo Switch. Uh, I played on the Wii, the Nintendo Wii, with friends, which was a lot of fun. And uh, that's about it, really. Maybe, uh, oh, some other systems. My mate had a C16 when we were younger. Um, and an Atari, the original Atari. So I uh, played quite a few of those games. And uh, anyway, let's, let's, let's have a look at the um, Albernique RG350M. Well, let's switch it on and have a look. I've been drinking a bit here, so I might be a little bit uh, uh, incoherent. But I'll try my best. Right, so here we go. Let's switch on. So just keep your finger on the power button for a little bit. I've got it plugged into the computer because it's charging, so that's a USB to USB C cable. I've actually, this isn't the cable that it comes with, this is a cable that I already had. So, on turning on, we're on applications. So, you've got all these applications, which hopefully you can see there on the screen. I think that's picking it up. So it's relatively straightforward. I've actually uploaded or downloaded uh, some extra emulators on this system. But it already comes with, if I press the uh, shoulder buttons, we can toggle through the top options. So we're on emulators at the moment. So you've got XMAME, which actually I haven't got working. Um, I think you need to download the files into the internal memory. So you've got two two memory cards here. One's got a sticker over it, that's the internal memory. And then you've got a memory card here, which is the external memory, which you can pop in and out. So at the moment, uh, I've got a 64 GB memory card in the external memory, and it actually came with a 32 gigabyte uh, memory card. I think, or it might be 16. I think it was 32. Anyway, I put it, I switched it over for 64 because I downloaded downloaded a load of games and emulators and stuff like that. 
but you can transfer between the external and the internal um, memory cards and we'll put some videos up on how to use that to your benefit in future videos. So anyway, back to where we were. So use the shoulder buttons to toggle between where you want to go. So you've got games there, settings, applications, emulators. Then back to games again. Let's have a look at the emulators. So yeah, like I say, we had X MAME. I think I'm going to download a different version of MAME to get the MAME games working. Um, but there's also another emulator which plays arcade games, which is the FBA. RG350 emulator there, which I'm pointing at. I'm hoping that's picking up on the screen there. So that comes with the system. I've downloaded some extra emulators, which include the Arnold and the Caprice 32, which is just dedicated to the Amstrad computer systems from the 80s, the CPCs. DOSBox, I haven't used that. That comes with the system. Then you've got the NES emulator, which comes with the system. Genesis, uh, which comes with the system. Game Boy emulator, that comes with the system. Uh, Game, Boy Game Boy Color emulator, that comes with the system. Open Board, that comes with the system. Oswan, comes with the system. PlayStation emulator, PS1 or PSX, that comes with the system. Race, Neo Geo Pocket emulator, that comes with the system. SNES or Super Nintendo emulator that comes with the system. Pico Drive, Mega Drive, Stroke Genesis emulator, both the same thing, Mega Drive and Genesis. Mega Drive in Europe or the UK and Genesis in America, as most of us will know, or some of us. That comes with the system. Game Boy Advance emulator comes with the system. The PCA, PC Engine emulator, Temper, that comes with the system. Unreal Specky, I downloaded that. That's for ZX Spectrum games and uh, Vice, which is a Commodore emulator, which emulates the C64, C16, and other com uh, Commodore computer systems from the 80s. I downloaded that. That doesn't come with the system, as with the Unreal Specky. So if you want to play those games, uh, you'll need to download that from wherever you're going to download it from. And uh, a Neo Geo emulator great emulator which comes with the system also so yeah these are all great systems uh, there's some preloaded games as well on the games page which aren't in the folders um, I don't know why they did that but uh, anyway that's there I suppose that's like instant access perhaps for uh, people that don't understand the system beginners maybe uh, then we've got se uh, settings about you can set up all your bits and pieces um, you can access a network which connects your um, this the Albernic 350M to RG350M to the computer. Power off, reboot, or power off, reboot, change your skin, and uh, other bits and pieces, sound mixer, wallpaper, and other stuff. Applications, clock. So obviously you can set your clock there. That might be a little bit difficult. So that could that'll, that'll be a video for another. Um, time if anybody is interested in that and we've got access to the file manager so you see there there's the file manager I don't know if that's appearing on the screen there so the screen splits so you can transfer between your external and internal files or internal to internal external to external and just swap files over the file system takes a little bit of getting used to but uh, it's not too difficult. If I can get used to it, anybody can get used to it. And I'm a bit daft in these situations, but I've managed to swap files around and all that type of jazz. Obviously, be confident in what you're doing when you're swapping files around. But uh, these things are for future videos or videos if anybody's interested. So we'll go back to the main menu. And I can't really get. Oh, yeah, right. So on this one, because you know, the instructions aren't very good, I must say, which come with uh, this system. But if we press Y on this menu, we can quit and press A to activate. And then we're back to our main GUI, graphics user interface menu. So uh, so there we are. Um, it's a, this, there's all kinds of things on here. You just need to like look through and 
see what's going on emulators let's load up an emulator let's load up um let's have a look at the arcade game so the fba emulator so that's launching hope you can see there so this would have been like arcade games during the 80s 90s 2000s perhaps uh, these games will load up on MAME systems also. Um, I haven't got the MAME X working on this system, like I said earlier. Earlier, um, But I will download a, another MAME system at some point. There's various systems to go through. Perhaps we'll go through that in a different video. Um, but there's, you know, there's um, plenty of YouTube videos that will show you the path on YouTube anyway to help you out if you need help and out. Right then, so you can see the games here. There, there's an old game from the 80s, Space Harrier. And this 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 particular emulator, you can see the, um, it'll give you a image to see what you're looking at as well, which is great. Street Fighter 2, classic favorite. Let's load up 1944. I used to like these games. Run game. So we're loading up. I was never very good at these games, mind. So I think we've got to put a few coins in. Let's press and select. Start button. Let's go. So we got a plane taken off. Oh, there's a special weapons. So there we are, graphics great. Fantastic. Oh, I died then, I didn't know I died. Oh no, there I am. Anyway, let's have a look at another game or emulator. So if I press the power button and the select button, that'll take us back to the main menu. Uh, let's have a look at um, the PS games next. So if I go back, I'm a big fan of the Wipeout games. So let's go to Wipeout 2097. Now this is called 2097 in Europe, but apparently it was XL in America. Um, just for your information, if you've had problems with getting the music working with the Wipeout, You've probably selected one of these uh, files here, which I think are the music tracks, but it'll still take you into the game. If you go down to Wipeout 2097 Europe with nothing after it and start that up, you'll get the music playing alongside the game. I'll do a separate video on that as well, by the way. So as you can see, you've got the game loading up. I think hunt that on. Come on. So there's the intro. There's a little bit of a bug in this game on the intro just up here. I've only noticed on this version of Wipeout. But uh, it's no big deal to me. Right, press start. So you can see in here we got the music going as well. Uh, press start again. Actually, press the A button to start. Uh, there we are. We got Wipeout 2097 loading and ready to play. I love this game. Right, as you can see there, the, the graphics haven't turned out properly. That's happened once before when I've played this game. So all we need to do is restart it by pressing the power and the select button. We can go back to where we were and just restart the game again. 
Yeah, you might want to power it off and power it back on again between games, certain games, just to make sure they're working properly and correctly. Let's go back to the PS emulator. It's a PC SX for all. Go under the correct starting file. And start the game. So start B, of course that's like the X on the actual PlayStation. So that's a bottom button. So here we go. So the graphics are great and we're all ready to go. I've missed my thrust, but anyway. So you can see the game there with the music. Graphics perfect. I just love this game. I love all versions of this game. It's great. Yep, definitely a wipeout fanboy I am. have to brush up on my wipeout skills as well right so finally let's just have a look at the right so finally let's have a look at the spectrum zx spectrum emulator so we'll exit the ps obviously there's loads of emulators we can go through here and like i say a few of these i've actually downloaded um since getting the system uh you get supplied with a um memory card with stuff on it and that might differ from uh wherever you buy the system from so you might get different set of emulators and games from where you buy this particular system from right then let's load up the unreal specy the zx spectrum emulator and let's have a look at a game there's a game i used to love back in the day back in the 80s which was fire lord so let's load that up Find, there we are, Fire Lord by Hewson. So, ooh. So I'm going to load that file up there. A bit loud, I'll turn the volume down a little bit. Right, so what we're going to do here is select Kempston joystick. So you can press start to get the key, the virtual keyboard out. So press 1, which I think was... Uh, that was selected, that's selected anyway, and zero to start game, so you need to press zero on the key, the virtual keyboard, and away we go. So there we are. So it's just the D-pad you use for this. Oh, yeah, this game, you need to pick something up before you can, right. So the A button is the fire button, but you need to pick up an object before you can start firing. So I can't remember, this game was like either 86 or 87, I think it came up on the screen, but I missed it. I used to play this game for hours. So obviously this might not appeal to current gamers, but uh, gamers of my age, so I'm nearly 50. Yep, knocking on heaven's door, one foot in the grave. But this is what I used to play when I was a teenager. I still love the graphics now. Great graphics. This is a 48k Spectrum 8-bit computer. As you can probably tell. But the creativity still fantastic it's like comparing like a new film say like Lord of the Rings CGI to uh, to the Jason and the Argonauts films back in the 60s and to me I appreciate them both equally and they still look great let's do these computer games then to computer games now 
So there we are. Uh, I could go through all these emulators. There's loads to go through, of course. Uh, let's go back to the main menu. Um, let's say you've got games, settings. To, there's lots of things here. Might take a little bit. It doesn't take too long to get used to the filing system. This system's great, though. I'm, I'm addicted to it, and I've only just scratched the surface. I've, I, like I said, I've just downloaded a couple of emulators or put some emulators on the thing, getting used to all that. And uh, that's about it. So, yeah, so we went through some arcade games, the PS1, just a demo out, and the ZX Spectrum. But there's lots of systems you can download onto this system uh, on a great handheld device. And, yeah, I give it 10 out of 10. Love it. It's great. It's relatively um, inexpensive. I think I bought this for 70 quid uh, in Britain. I'm not sure what that translates to in dollars. Maybe $100, maybe. Uh, so you got the... If you know what you're doing, you can take the internal card out. They've stuck a sticker over there, obviously, purposely, to stop anybody from ejecting that to keep your system safe. You've got the external memory card there to stick in your little micro SD. Reset button there if anything happens, the game crashes or whatever. Volume on the side there. Power button. So start and select D-pad. The buttons that you'd expect on a uh, traditional game system at present. These are marked out A, B, X, Y, so that's the same as like a Nintendo system. you got the like the joy uh, controllers at the bottom which are pretty much like the uh, switch controllers the shoulder buttons you got L1 L2 R2 R1 you got an OTG uh, adapter there which fits um, your USB-C cable uh, you probably won't need that. That's for sort of more more advanced users. You've got an HD out. I haven't used that yet. I might have to activate that. I've seen in other videos that you might have to activate that. So I haven't tried that out yet to see if that works. But I will. whatever happens, I will get that working so that I can record the screen on the computer of the RG350M. You've got a headphone socket there. Um, so we'll try that at some point with headphones and speakers and then you've got your USB in so that's your USB-C port there so that's used for charging and to connect to your computer so at the moment this, this system is actually charging that's why I've had the lead plugged in you see the uh, red light there and that will turn to green mind you I'm looking at the screen now it looks green but it, that is red but it will turn green once it's charged nice pads on the back like little rubber pads so you can set it down on your table or workspace and that's about it nice finish i've got the rose gold here i think the color scheme sort of copied from the um apple phones and uh, i think it looks great feels great great system relatively inexpensive and uh, you can download all your favorite games that you own um, from your systems um, there's some so, there's some games that I own I haven't got the uh, the um, consoles anymore so I can't play them but I can download them to back them up from certain sites on the internet I can't tell you where those sites are you've heard all this before but you can find them yourself um, to download your backup games in the form of ROMs so yeah I give this 10 out of 10 Love it. Great system. Inexpensive. Great. And you can play all your favourite games and get that nostalgic buzz. Highly recommended. Um, this is the only system that I own. So I can't compare it to any others, but I'm very, very impressed with this system. To the point, like those old computers, you can actually program the computers into this system via the emulator of those computer systems. So anyway, I'm waffling on a bit. Um, I don't think I've got anything more to add. Just that, um, there we are, this is a great system. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you soon. And over and out for now.